Okay, we're going to start up now with uh, Chapter 8, Foundation Cisco Configurations. Uh, this is when we first really started getting into the configurations, obviously, of the, the actual routers and switches and stuff. Okay, um, so we'll, go ahead, we'll have a slide on each of these, but we'll start off with the global configuration. Uh, the various things you can do there, including altering the boot sequence, changing the host name, uh, creating a login banner, assigning a password for privilege exec mode, uh, domain name specific commands and enabling SSH. Uh, so starting off with altering the boot sequence. Um, altering the boot sequence we discussed extensively in chapter 7 but we didn't really get into the actual commands for like modifying the configuration register and stuff. Um, so you know changing the configuration register allows us to alter the normal boot operation of the router. Um, so if we want to force the router to boot to ROMMON um, we would need to change the configuration register. It's normally, with normal operation, set to 0x2102. Um, if we set it to 0x2100, it's going to boot directly to ROM line. So the command structure is, and again, you know, config space terminal or config space T to get into uh, global configuration mode. You'll see that your, uh, your sign here will change to just config. Uh, the actual command is going to be config dash register space and then whatever you want to actually change that register number to in this case for Raman 0x2100 um, if you need to set that back and you're still in you know normal operation of the router not in Raman uh, it's going to be the same command config dash register space 0x2102 and then if you uh, you know if you change it to 2100 and reboot it, you're obviously not going to be in the, the normal operation of the router. So from ROMMON to change it back to 0x2102 so you can get back to normal operation, uh, well first of all ROMMON is going to look like this, so it shouldn't be capitalized, but all the commands are going to be ROMMON space 1, ROMMON space 2, so if you hit enter it's going to be 2, 3, 4, etc. And for each line you, you hit it's just going to tell you the next line number. Um, so the command is actually uh, very similar, but it's confreg, uh, you know, no spaces, a single word, uh, space 0x, and then 2102 again is the, the default uh, configuration register, so it boots up normally and reads the startup config. And then uh, instead of your reload command like you would from normal operation, it's, uh, it's a reset inside of ROM. Um, you can also modify the startup sequence using the boot system command. Um, it instructs Bootstrap to locate the iOS. Uh, it, the boot system command basically uh, gives you more granularity, like how you want it to normally boot up. So, uh, for example, if you wanted to instruct the Bootstrap to locate the iOS on the TFTP server at 172.16.1.1, command would be, and again from global configuration mode for all these that we're starting off with, boot space system space TFTP space, and then the, the name of the iOS, in this case uh, C2600 dash. DO3, SMZ, etc. space, and then the IP address of the TFTP server, in this case 172.16.1.1. Um, so that's you know one particular modification. Um, if you wanted to show Bootstrap to specifically load uh, you know this particular iOS in the event there are multiple iOS files in Flash, um, well first of all that's only going to pertain to newer routers that do have the the room in Flash, the, the amount of memory that they can store uh, to iOS's. A lot of older routers will not have enough memory in, in Flash to even be able to store to iOS's, so you might have to you know delete one before you can even put a new one on there. Um, but in the event that you wanted to, you did have two on there, and you you didn't necessarily know that uh, the one you wanted to load was the first one in memory that it's going to try to load from. Um, to specify it, you could do the, the boot system command, boot dash syst or space system, space flash, space, and then the, uh, the name of that iOS file that you're wanting it to load. Um, and then you can also change the host name. Uh, changing the host name is used to uh, uniquely identify the router. Default host name of a router is capital router. Default uh, for a switch is capital switch. Command is very simple uh, from configuration mode, uh, host name, space, and then whatever you want the, the router to be named now. In this case, uh, we're changing its name to Osiris. Um, so you, you can see after that it changes the name to Osiris uh, in config mode. And then uh, creating a login banner. Uh, the banner is displayed to all users upon logging into the device. It is recommended to advise of acceptable use policies for the uh, device within the banner. Avoid using terms such as welcome. The reason I say this is that um, 
having something like welcome listed in your your banner of any device, you know, whether it's a, a, a Linux or Unix system, any kind of PC or a Cisco router, um, limits what you can do in the event that a hacker or someone who is not authorized to uh, access that device were to get into that device. Um, so, you know, I, I believe there was a case back in the uh, 80s or 90s, I can't really remember. Um, I think, I thought it was an MIT, but my memory on this is a little bit sluggish. Um, but th there was a case where a, a, a student or hacker got into a system. He was, he was caught, apprehended by law enforcement. They tried to prosecute him, and he was able to successfully use as a, a defense in court that the, the initial banner uh, going into the device had the word welcome in it. And so he presumed that he was, uh, he was able to go in there and do what he wanted to. So that's why you don't want to use the, the word welcome. Um, below you've got like kind of a, a good uh, idea of like what a, a, a standard kind of banner should be. Um, configuration mode, you know, global configuration mode, command structure is going to be banner space, MOTD, uh, standing for message of the day space, and then your delimiting character. Uh, your delimiting character is basically what tells the uh, uh, for the router for the banner message what the where the beginning and the end is. It can be any character. Um, in this case, I'm using the pound symbol. Using something like the pound symbol might be helpful rather than like a letter because um, it, it can cause a problem otherwise. Like, let's say I, I tried to use the letter A as my delimiting character instead of the pound symbol here. Uh, you know, so say you had an A here and an A here. Um, instead of reading that properly it would read this is and then assume this is the end of the the banner cut it off and then that would be all you'd be able to see on the banner message so make sure for your delimiting character you use something that you're not going to use or are unlikely to use in your uh, actual banner message uh, this is a private system and may only be accessed by authorized personnel unauthorized use is prohibited and will be prosecuted to the fullest extent of the law so <coughs> Uh, so I got a router here. Uh, first of all, let's let's go ahead and change the host name. Um, jump into config T mode. Oh, enable one first. Uh, jump into config T mode. Oops. Let's go back up. Okay. Sorry about that. Uh, host name, and then uh, we'll go ahead and. Say it's Billy Bob. A great name for a router. So we got our host name in there. You can see that it changed automatically. And then we want to set a, uh, a banner message. So banner MOTD. Um, this time I'll, I'll just use the uh, you know asterisk as a delimiting character. This is a closed system. It's a pretty bad banner message, but we'll use it anyway. Better than welcome, I guess. Uh, and we'll go ahead and close that off with the asterisk. And do a do show run. <coughs> and you can see on the bottom here, you got your banner message. This is a closed system. Go away. So, we've got our host name and our banner message in there. Back to the slides. <coughs> so.